today I wanted to talk today about uh, third practice and, and option Greeks. So I'll go through the through the agenda. It's, we're gonna I'll introduce myself. We'll do a code overview. I'll talk about basic option Greeks, and then we'll jump into the Quad Connect platform and show you how to to implement it. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Benjamin George. I have a PhD in aerospace engineering. Um, I right now I, I do data processing and hardware testing for defense contractor. Um, so I'm an engineer by trade who's became an investor in in, in quant. Um, in, in 2023. Uh, my primary platform that I use is uh, Python on Quant Connect. Uh, Quant Connect uh, is something I've been using actually since 2023. They're a platform that I use to be able to uh, implement my algorithmic trading. My goal today is really to hopefully uh, give you a taste of what can be done with, in terms of algorithmic trading and hopefully have you start coding and trading. Um, that would be the, the goal. So to talk about the, the algorithm that I'm going to basically highlight in this short demo is uh, we're going to create an algorithm to, to implement a covered call strategy to reduce the cost basis and generate income. And so that I've broken it down into three, I would say three main sections. There's the universe selection. Uh, and just like last week, or actually, I guess, extension of last week, uh, I'm going to use the Magnificent Seven as my universe. So it's uh, Apple, Amazon, Google, um, Meta or Facebook, Microsoft, NVIDIA, and then Tesla. From my universe, I expect to get price data, so um, the, the price action, and I think I'll get it on a minutely basis in my model. And implementing what we learned last week, uh, I'll calculate the 100-day simple moving average and see when the, the current price is less than that. And that'll initiate like a trade signal, which will then go to the execution portion of my, my code where I'll send a market order to buy 100 shares. And then I'll look for the, the 16 delta call option with at least 10 days to expiration. And I'll sell that for some income. To remind you, we implemented the simple moving average. If you want more details, you can take a look at my talk uh, from last week. And today what we're going to focus on is, is how to find the delta or actually really the option Greeks in the Quant Connect platform and use those to sell that option. So what are the option Greeks? So option Greeks, for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, they're a measure of risk associated with the option price value. And they're based on basically the partial derivative of the Black-Scholes formula with respect to the various parameters that can change the option price value. So I'm going to focus on delta initially because that's the Greek that is most often used. It is basically the derivative of the Black-Scholes uh, with respect to the underlying security value. And it ranges from zero to one for calls and zero to negative one for puts. So a delta of 0.25 means that an increase of, of positive 0.25 means that an increase of $1 in the underlying will increase the option value by 25 cents. So say that Google is at 1481 and the option value that we're selling has a delta of 0.25. That means if Google increases to 1486, that option value should increase to $1.25. Another interpretation of the delta could be the approximate likelihood for the option expiring in the money. And then the third interpretation for delta can indicate directional risk. So if you have a positive delta, that's indicating that you're long the, the market or the, the contract that you're purchasing. And if you are negative delta, that means you're short the contract that you're purchasing or actually selling, I should say. Some more option Greeks that we'll look at, or really that are more commonly used, is the theta, which is the time decay of the option price value. So the derivative of the Black-Scholes with respect to time. Gamma is the rate of change of delta. So the rate of change of how the option value changes with respect to price. And then we have Vega, which is option price sensitivity to volatility changes. Technically, you know, Vega is not a Greek letter. So sometimes you'll see in academic literature that it's called Kappa but just, to, just a note to, to be aware of. And then there's Rho, which is the interest rate effects on the option price. Now, Rho is very rarely used because, or really very rarely looked at, I should say, because really its effects are negligible compared to you know Delta, Theta, Gamma, and Vega. Overall, the Greeks are a, a valuable tool in helping you hedge your portfolio, understand the risk that your portfolio when you, you know, buy and sell options, and to help you adjust. Say that you're trying to hedge your options contract with the underlying. Knowing the delta will allow you to modify the purchase or sale of options versus buying and selling the underlying. So why don't we jump into the Quant Connect platform and I will show you kind of what we're, uh, what we're gonna implement. So what I'm showing here is simply the Quant Connect platform. I kind of showed it to you last week. 
and we'll kind of briefly go through it again. At the beginning, you set your start date. You can set an end date. Uh, if you don't set an end date, it'll just run until today. You set your cache. You set the the ticker. So if you remember last time, I only used one ticker. This time, I included the Magnificent Seven just to give you an idea of what you know. The the complexity doesn't actually increase that much when you add more tickers. I have some variables here to store the option symbol. So like the underlying ticker may be Goog. But the option symbol is going to be like, I think in Quant Connect, it's like dollar sign G-O-O-G. So I need to keep track of that. And then some dictionaries to, to, to keep track of the simple moving average. Joshua, just for you, I actually included in this code a volume weighted average option. So if you just uncomment the code associated with volume weighted average, you should be able to just run this when I post it to the uh, Quant Connect platform. As a reminder, we're setting our moving average to 100. And so what this is doing here is it's just going through all the tickers. So this is self underlying tickers. So it's going through all seven of these and first adding the, the ticker to the universe. So that's the, the tickers that you see here. So there's a symbol associated with that ticker and then also adding the option contract or the, the option symbol associated with that ticker. Just a heads up that if you've ever looked at the option chain, there can be hundreds, thousands of, of options if, depending on what you're looking at or the size of your universe. And so if you want to speed up your code, you want to filter that. So what I have here, here is I use Quant Connect's set filter code to basically only look at options that are $100 above my current underlying price or right at or $0 um, at, or at the underlying price, if you will. And then I look at options that are only going to expire with between 10 to 45 days. That's what this time delta of 10 and 45 is saying. Um, I put the option symbol into a dictionary that's marked by a ticker. And then I also start my uh, simple moving average. So here in the on data, as, as you remember, you are cycling through all the tickers in your, in your list that you put above. So here you're checking to have the bar if there's like a trade bar. So the trade bar would be the open, high, low, close volume data based on the, the ticker. And then this is some like if bar. So what you're doing is you're checking to see if that bar is not, is not none. So I, I would encourage you, especially if you're starting to program, you have to be cognizant of places that you can be, I guess, defensive in your programming, trying to figure out where their bugs are going to be. So if, if for instance, the data provider didn't have the trade bar or the open, high, low, close volume, and, and you try to run this code, if you didn't have this if statement, the code would break. You know, you want to make your code as robust as possible. So there are little things like that that um, you'll see in my code that you should practice. Here, basically, after we get, we make sure that we have the bar, we look at the portfolio invested, see if we're invested, if we're not invested, and the close price for the the current bar is less than the hundred day moving average. We get the options chain. So I'm going to run this very quickly, and we can actually uh, let me do this. Yeah, just run it like that. Uh, so I'll have this running in the background while we talk. So what this does is it basically pulls the, the ch options chain based on the ticker. And again, checks to see if that options chain is none. If it's not none, then we start to, to sort the, the chain. So we look specifically because we're selling covered calls. We make sure that the ch we're looking for only the contracts in the chain that are, that are calls. And then we sort by the option expiration date. This is how you determine the expiration date. You just use this Lambda function. And then based on that here, I uh, do, um, I sell the, oh, this should be 16, but that's okay. This is basically the value that you want closest to the Greeks. So I made the 16 in my slide. This could be 25. This is basically for our discussion, it will be the, the, the approximate likelihood that the option will expire in the money, which we don't want because we're selling a covered call. So we want it to expire out of the money. So if you wanted to make sure that you, your option expired, uh, it didn't expire in the money. You could actually sell a, a call that's even further out of the money, but the premium that you receive for that would be much lower. Here, I'm checking again to make sure that I didn't sort out all uh, sort out too many of my contracts. And then if it finds it, then it basically buys a hundred shares of the stock and then sells that contract that we found here. So very straightforward, very simple. Let me show some back tests, which I have. So this one's still running. So we'll let that run. Um, just to kind of give you an idea of what it would look like if we, and I'll post this too. This is actually from last week where I just traded the the Magnificent Seven. You can see last time we had a much larger profit, but once we uh, started trading more stocks, I think it was it was down a little bit. But I'm going to include this back test in the in the Quant Connect code that I'll that I'll show you later. This is actually really what we're interested in. So 
Uh, this is their tear sheet for a back test. Um, as you can see at the top, we started with, uh, well, you can't tell, but we started with the million dollars down. This test ran for about a month. Now we're down to about 975,000, uh, negative 3% return. And you can see the equity as a function. Oh, this is three months actually. Great. So this is three months of time. You can see that uh, initially it was up and then it went back down. This basically shows you the portfolio, what's inside your portfolio. And now I want to show you actually the orders here. So as you can see in this orders uh, takeaway, what we did is starting on the 10th, we found that the current moving price was less than the 100 day moving average. So we bought 100 shares of Google for uh, 1424.69. And then we sold a call for 1090. And this call, you can kind of tell based on this, this, this description here uh, tells you what kind of option you bought or sold. So this would be a, a option expiring on 2020, uh, February 21st. This is a call and this is a $1,500 strike price that we, we sold. And uh, you can see that the platform just kind of cut, chugs through the and holds that option. And then on the 22nd, the option expired out of the money. Um, and so that's what you're seeing here. So really the portfolio, uh, would have done slightly worse if we had not sold that, that option. So what are some of the ways that we can improve this, this strategy? One way is we can actually use implied volatility metrics to determine when uh, the option premium is the highest. So when you're selling an option, you want the implied volatility to be high because that means that the option you're selling is going to be worth more. We would look at different option strategies. So maybe we want to, instead of selling covered call, we would want to do a short naked put or straddle. Maybe we want to use a different indicator. Why use simple moving average? Let's use volume weighted average or maybe like a, a moving average converging diverging. Or another thing is we could uh, automate our universe. Maybe instead of using the highest market caps, we could maybe just look at particular sector and, and look at the stocks there. And we could do that using like an automated universe. We can look into how IV and, and Greeks are calculated. Jared actually sent me a message this morning about a new research paper that they had put out showing how lean, which is the, the engine running, the back end running Quant Connect, how they calculate the Greeks and the IV because it is it is different for each vendor. And, and uh, Quant Connect has done some really interesting research. Actually, I think I'm going to do a talk on it maybe in a couple of weeks after, we, after I dive into it. With that, I think that's all I had. You know, thanks for, for joining. Please reach out to me on Quantopian if you have any questions. Bye-bye. Thanks again, Ben. Take care.